to start out here with the word order. It's uh, very similar to English. The only difference here is that in the subordinate clauses, the adverbial and the verb, they switch places. That's the only difference from English. Maybe we, we, we need to, to show an example. Well, we can just take it here as uh, the one that's already here, where we have um, the, the article, where in English it will be it, and we have the adverbial, adverbial ege, so, which is not, and here we have the verb er, which is is, and we have uh, the object, which is him. And in Danish, you'll say de ikke er ham. So you have the adverbial here, which is not, and then you have the verb here, which is is, where in English they will switch places. So you have the verb uh, before the adverbial, uh, so it will be subject, verb, adverbial, and object. Right, um, I think we'll just move on then to um, the greetings and the valedictions. The ones up here are the greetings and the ones down here are the valedictions. And I think we'll just start with the greetings. To start off we have hi, which uh, will translate to hi or hey, which uh, are a semi-formal semi greeting. Well, you can get by by using hi in nearly every context. Uh, there's not really any context what's inappropriate to use. So you can get by, you can actually just get by just by using hi. Uh, the next one is vessa. Directly translated, it will be what so, but the English equivalent will be what's up. Um, so we'll just write that down. Well, and that's uh, the informal greeting. Uh, the next one is hello, which you could say will be hello, but it's slightly more informal in Danish to say hello than it is to say hello in English. Uh, the next one is hello, sir, which is just another form of hello, where, well, that's even more informal, so it's one you will only use with people you're very close to. Uh, the next one is good day, which is um, uh, which is consists of two parts, good and day. Good meaning good and day meaning day. I'll just write that down for you. Um... And together they will make good day. Uh, and as I said, I uh, at least at least I think I did. Um, that's a formal greeting, and yeah, it's not um, even though it is an, a formal greeting. Um, it's uh, well, it's still appropriate in most contexts. Actually, I'll say it's actually appropriate in all context. context. Um, the next one is paint good day, which is well, the one we saw just before. Good day, which is good day. And paint, which has quite a lot of meanings. But in this context, you will, uh, well, it doesn't really a good English word for it, but paint usually is like nice or beautiful or maybe even neat. Uh, it can be all of those, uh, and many more. The next one is Tao, which is just... Uh, um, it's mostly used in Jutland, where it's uh, it's how day is pronounced, and okay, I'll just write that down here. So, then, day meaning day, and um, in, the, in the dialects, uh, the way you will say day, it's is it's just Tao, but um, in standard Danish you'll just say day, uh, and um, yeah, I'll just wrong as day. The next one is Tao, which is just another form of Tao, where yes, just add an added an S, um, and they are really no different. Uh, I'll just like to add that both of them are in fact. On uh, informal greetings. The next one is Gumon, which is um, 
has consists of, it consists of two parts go meaning good and morn meaning morning uh, so together they mean or they translate to good morning well that's a rather formal greeting but it's also appropriate in all contexts on contact um next up we have go after midday which uh, still uh, consists of two parts we have go still meaning good and we have after midday meaning afternoon where we have uh, after meaning after and middag meaning noon uh, but we can break it uh, down into even smaller parts where we have new meaning uh, yeah just i'll also like to add that that middag and uh, mid as of the mid in middag and mid they are pronounced differently even though uh, it's the two words to put into one uh, so look out for that but mid will translate to mid and day into day so the way you'll say middag or so the way you'll say noon is actually midday so the greeting here is good afternoon and it will be pronounced Good, uh, Ella. Go after midday. Next up, we have go after, which is again consists of two. Oh, um, which again consists consists of two parts. Good, Ella. Or go meaning good, and after meaning evening. Um, as not much that it's also a rather formal greeting, but still it's uh, appropriate in all context. Uh, so that was all of the greetings. Uh, Could you tell us which ones of these you use most? Like as a speaker, do you use some of these more than others or are there specific contexts where you use them? Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, well, hi is more or less just like hi in English. And well, most of them use just like they would in English where we have vessel meaning what's up um, and the others down here good day good morning good afternoon day where most of the time you will just say hi or hi that's what you'll say but at times you will use the others um, maybe if you were greeting someone you didn't know that well you will go with one of the ones, uh, one of those who contain good, which is like if you meet someone in the morning, you'll just say good morning to them. But if it's someone who's close to you, you will, oh, you might use hi or better instead. Uh, hello isn't used that much, nor is hello. Um, they are used, but you won't see them that often, uh, especially not in. Every or oh, in written Danish, you will might hear them once in a while in spoken Danish, but again, they are so informal and you'll only use them to people who you're close to, so you won't meet them that often. Yeah, and uh, Tao or Taos, they are mostly used in Jutland, so if you're uh, on the Iceland, you might not hear them as often. Uh, and again, they are rather informal, so you might not meet them in written Danish, but in spoken Danish, they come up quite like, once in a while. And well, in the dialects, they are used more often, meaning that people with heavier dialects will probably use them more often. Yeah, so we'll start off with mine, which is only used in southern Jutland um, it's well it's just uh, it's the same as the German Moin uh, um, it's just spelled differently in Denmark and you won't really meet it unless you're very close to the border so it's not that important the next one you will meet quite often which is hi hi 
which you might think is a greeting, but in fact it isn't. It's hi, as we saw up here, meaning hi or hey, just said twice, which is actually a valediction. So it will just translate to hi hi. Um, that is a valediction, even though it could look as a greeting. Uh, the next one is farewell, which is just farewell. Um, there's not much to that. Uh, the next one is tak for a day, which means thanks for today, which you can use in quite a lot of situations where, let's say you have been with someone all day and you're finally going home, uh, then you can say thanks for today when you're leaving. Um, or if you have been visiting someone and you're going home, you can also say thanks for today. Uh, or you might just say it once you go home from work or school. Uh, the next one is tak for mel, which translated directly will mean thanks for food or thanks for the meal, but that will be tak for raten, so it's not the direct translation, but that will make more sense to say. Um, and well, it's just used after you have eaten something someone else has cooked or bought. Um, yeah, you just use it whenever you are done eating and are leaving the and you're leaving the table. The next one up is visees, which uh, directly trains to we. Um, how would you say that? Uh, well, we cannot really translate it directly, uh, but it will. The English equivalent is see you again, or yeah, that's actually the only equivalent, I think. Um, yeah, it's kind of used in the same way. Uh, the next one is Visig Signa, meaning uh, see you later. Uh, but uh, what you uh, also to the one up here, I forgot to mention that. That V means we, and says means, well, you cannot really say that in English. So we will see each other. I rather hard, there's not really an easy way to translate it. And Sena is just the superlative, or no, no uh, the comparative form of Sena, meaning late, uh, and therefore Sena will be later. So it, yeah, that's what it is. Um, what one did we come to? Uh, you, yeah, we say Sina. Yeah, it's kind of used in the same way as see you later is in English. Uh, the last one is Gunet, meaning good night. Um, yeah, where go means good, and net means uh, night. Um, so it just those two words combined, meaning good night. And that was all of the valedictions I have chosen to include. I'll just go over all of them again, uh, just quickly. Uh, I'll just uh, say them out loud so you can hear it. We have hi, meaning hi. Vesa, meaning what's up. What's up. Hello, meaning hello. Aloysa, also meaning hello. Good day, meaning good day. Paint good day, meaning, yeah, well, yeah, also good day. Uh, Dao, meaning day. Daos, also meaning day. Good morning, which translates to good morning. Good afternoon, which translates to good afternoon. We have, um, go. Go often, which translates to good evening. Uh, moin, which you can't say uh, because it's German, so <laughs> it would be rather hard. Um, we have hi hi, translating to hi hi. Farewell, translating to farewell. Tak for a day, translating to thanks for today. Tak for mel, translating to thanks for food, or less directly, but it will sound better. Thanks for the meal. We say is translating to see you again. We say Sina translating to see you later. Monette translating to good night.